Okay, happy Monday, everybody. Can everybody see this? Yes. Hopefully. I thought I would just give a very quick demo as to how to construct a tree map. There are 20 or so different algorithms for constructing a tree map. I'm going to demonstrate the most basic, simplest possible case. So this A is our root node. So our tree map, the root node is, is represented by the, the top level rectangle, the whole screen space. And then it's subdivided by, its num by the number of children. So there are two children here. So I'm just going to subdivide it, B and C, and recurse. That's it, basically. So B gets subdivided by D, E, and F. So that's three. Three children, B, D, and E, and F. <coughs> And then F is subdivided by G and H. So I'm just going to draw them like that. G and H. It's the world's simplest tree map construction algorithm. Question? Kasia, right? I think you have psychic powers, actually. <clears throat> so, this is the world's simplest, like I said. And the kind of, the, the, the size of the rectangles reflects the depth that they're in in the hierarchy. But it doesn't really reflect <coughs> the data very much that's stored in the child nodes. Like, here, every child node just stores the same amount of data. So I can try it again where the data is changing. <laughs> so I'll try an example where the data is actually data stored and, and we're reflecting the we're reflecting the size of the of the nodes based on the data that they contain. So I have to put some data there. So I'm gonna put some very complicated data. One Two, this one will be something like two, three, four. Well, I'm going to actually, this F is represents its leaf nodes, so its data is three, right? And B also represents its leaf nodes. Its data is two plus three plus three, which is eight as far as I can remember. <laughs> And just to make it easy, uh, I'll put two there. So now every node actually stores data, right? And so then the subdivision is not always just down the middle anymore. This is like the second most simplest tree node construction algorithm. So in this case, B is very big, so it occupies 80% of the of the root node, and C represents 20%. So that's the idea, and if I want, I can add a little 80. This is, this is only for pedagogical purposes. You would normally like have this information there, right? But the, and this is 20% 20, 20 of the width. And then B is subdivided by 2, 3, and 3. So the 2 is a little bit thinner. <coughs> and then the 3 and 3, so this is D, E, and F. So there's a 2, a 2 in width, so to speak, a 3 and a 3. And then F is divided by 1 and 2. Two, so that's like that's like 
one and three, right? So F gets subdivided. There's G, which occupies one third of F, its parent node, and then there's H, which occupies the other two thirds. So that's the, that's the rectangles shrinking and, and growing depending on what data they are representing, not only which level of the hierarchy they are. Good question. Any other questions about? So there are lots more. We, we just went over two, two basic ones. The what's the name of that program? Disk inventory X does not use exactly this app. Algorithm. It does use the recursive aspect with the subdivisions, and so does many eyes. Does anybody notice what could be different about the, the many eyes implementation or the or the disk inventory X implementation? It doesn't look exactly the same. It looks similar, but it's got a slightly different property. Are there any like anybody feeling like very smart and sophisticated today. <laughs> I'm not raising my hand. <laughs> so the attendance register. If you notice, if you look carefully at the disk inventory X and many eyes algorithms, and somebody else showed me a tree map, the, the tree map nodes are squarified. So they look more like squares, and they try to get them all looking and the aspect ratio is close to a square as possible. So the square is changing in size, and they're still inside of their parent nodes, but they're square rather than more square than rectangular, so to speak. Yeah, that's the that's one of the differences. Any other questions about Carlo? Does it matter which way you so, for instance, in the first vision, you have a smallest of on the right, but in the last one, you have a smallest of on the left. I just, the way I did it, I just stayed in consistent. I went from left to right each time. That's just one version of the layout algorithm. There are many different versions. In some versions, preserve the order in which they appear in the tree, and some don't. So the squarified tree map algorithm actually places the largest, it starts with the largest square. It places that in its, in its the parent node places the largest child node in its sub-rectangle first, and then goes down in, in you know, decreasing order. So the order in the tree is not preserved. It's based on the, the data set size as it shrinks down. The hierarchical information is still preserved, so the, the same parents and the same children yeah. are preserved. It's just the order in which the children are traversed is changing, it's changed in that particular layout algorithm. There are algorithms that always preserve the order, and there are some that don't preserve the, the order. They have some sort of order. They're not random or chosen randomly. They could be from like first to last, or largest to smallest, generally. Sometimes it's very important to preserve the order from left to right. If you want to compare, for example, multiple tree nodes, or multiple tree maps, or, or things like that. Like in the cartographic tree maps example, the, the order is very important so you can compare the different CCGs with each other. Good. Good. Good way to start off the, the things.